I'm excited to welcome on one of the newest members of Louisville and LL. It's the number one overall JUCO player. What's going on, my guy? Good. How are you? Pretty good, man. Well, it's been a couple of days now. How's it started to settle in for you? How's it feel? I mean, it feels good just to know, like, I'm going to a big-time program like this. Um, coming out of JUCO, I really didn't think this was going to be uh, the situation I would be in. So I really just want to – it's really just a blessing. I just want to thank God for this opportunity, really. And I mean, before we go any further, we have to go back about a year ago. I mean, you sit back, getting ready for your first Juco year. Did you think any of this was going to be happening a year from now? Not, not a year. Like I at least thought it was going to be my sophomore year, like starting up during the season. Like I would really start getting offers and things like that. So I didn't think it was going to be this early. I didn't think I was going to have the opportunity to make my decision now. So just having the opportunity to make it now has just been big. So a big lift off my shoulders. And, I mean, you went throughout the course of the year. When did it start clicking that you realized you're not only going to play now at Division One level, but you're going to be a high major guy and now even the number one overall player? It's just really hard to say, like, just a blessing. Like, I never I never thought it would be like this. I mean, I had a few people tell me, like, it was going to happen, but I didn't think it was. I just wanted to, like, just focus on winning with my team and just getting better. So, really, just for all this to come, like, it was just really out of nowhere. And, I mean, you came on a little bit ago when you first announced your top group. Obviously, we know you're not going to Louisville. What went in the decision? Why was Louisville the school you chose? Really just – I built a really good relationship with Coach Mack and Coach Dino. And then just growing up in NC, like, I always wanted to play in the ACC. So, that's, that's always a kid's dream if you're growing up in North Carolina. So, really, it was just a no-brainer, like, being on one of the best teams in the ACC uh, – have an opportunity to win a national championship and, and then going to Final Fours. All the coach with Louisville is just great. Louisville, the city of Louisville, I mean, they really show love to their players and just – and the fan base is great. So being in that atmosphere every night, that's that's going to be big. So that's what I had to – it was a no-brainer. And I read somewhere that you said oh, pretty much all along you wanted to obviously go to Louisville. I mean, when did it kind of click that you realized you wanted Louisville, that was the school you wanted to ultimately be going to? So really, it was a FaceTime call me and Coach Mack had that that night. Um, I was up to like twelve o'clock, so we got off the phone at like nine. Um, he was just telling me like, "This is the place for you. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Like, you're gonna be able to be an impact player on a top team in the country." And it was like, "Your family's gonna be able to see you play a lot, like." You're not gonna get a better opportunity. All of that happened in like an hour or two span. So I called my mom. Uh, she talked about it. She told me that's where I wanted. To, that's where she wanted me to go. And after that, I just made the decision. I called him back at like 11:30, and I just told him. I mean, he was so excited. So really, just all of that just played in the factor, really. And so, how far apart was your announcement of your top group from that call? I think that was like. Two weeks. That was a good two weeks, I think, honestly. It wasn't that long, really. What kind of feeling did it feel that you know now that you don't have to do, deal with the recruitment process and go into your next season fully focused? Man, I'm, I'm glad I have this opportunity to be able to do that. Now I can just really just focus on getting stronger um, and just continue to get better, continue to work on my game. So I don't have to worry about all the calls, all the texts, and just talking to, with different Zooms, uh, knowing what visits I'm going to take, like, so now I just know, like, I can really focus. When I decided to come to Tallahassee, like, I didn't go on no other JUCO visits. I committed. I committed to my coach. And um, that's when I went on. Then I went on one visit, and I, and I was fine with that. Mm -hmm. so, and I felt like I made a good decision doing that. So I felt like if I was to do that again, I feel like I would put myself in the same situation. So I tried to base it off that, too. So I just built that relationship with Coach Mack. And now I feel like when I do take my visit, like, it's going to be right, like, so, and that's something that obviously you didn't get to take many visits, if any, at all, because of all the corona stuff going on. I mean, was that something you originally kind of wanted to do? Get some visits, go to some schools. Yeah, at first I really didn't want to go visit schools and everything, but once I found out like if the recruiting day was gonna get pushed back again, mm -hmm. I was like, man, uh, it might be just be that time to make my decision because I seen a lot of players were like cutting down their list and. Uh, players are starting to get ready to make their decision. So I didn't want to lose out on my opportunities that I had. So I was like, man, I might as well. 
I might as well get out the way because I know where I do want to go. I was, I'm not just going to push it back because of a visit. I can still go visit that school when I commit just in a later time. So I was like, I might as well just go ahead and make my decision. So between your top group and obviously committing, did you have anyone else you kind of were saying were close to Louisville or someone else maybe you narrowed it down again? Yeah, I was I was really fond of Oregon and UConn. Like, it was a really hard decision. I had kind of built a good relationship with them. But it was just to the fact, like, with Oregon, uh, they weren't – I don't think I was much of a priority. I mean, I was a – they say I was, but it just didn't feel like that. But you kind of make me – they made me a really – they made me a priority. Like, I was talking to the whole staff and everything, but it was just different with Louisville. Like, the opportunity I was going to have and then the relationship I already had because they were the first – they were one of the first schools. So, that relationship, it just – it just grew – it grew even more like the U- UConn, like they were just now coming on because they heard they was in my eight. But Louisville, they kept, ever since they offered me, like they built that relationship. So that just went a long way. And for I'd say about 99% of guys, Juco route, guys in the 2020, 2022 class, 2021 class, they haven't really had many offers come in because of not being able to play the past few months. You, on the other hand, pulled in 20 offers without really playing. How, how were you able to do that? What, I mean, what do you think it was that coaches allowed to get that many offers Without playing, uh, that's something I'm still trying to figure out. Like <laughs> that, that was a while. I really think it was just my was just pretty good. I guess I don't know. And then I, I guess I was just talking to coach a good way. But to get twenty something offers and not play any games, like that's crazy. I don't think I've seen that one before. Mm-hmm. And this is something that you are part of a unique era, a unique class, hopefully a one-time thing only with the whole Corona stuff going on. For you to be a part of this kind of never forgettable class, what's that feel like? I mean, it feels, it feels really good. Like, what we went through was different. Like, uh, we missed out on a lot of camps. A lot of kids missed out on AAU events. So just for us to still, like, and then with the whole Black Lives Matter situation, just for us to still, like, do what we got to do with everything that's going on big like it shows that like we can do anything and like nothing can really stop us from achieving our goals no matter what mm-hmm. and now you're also joining into a class that's right now in rank number two overall we know your guy bobby obviously is out there bryce hopkins also is a big time commit you guys have the number two overall class right now what's the next piece are you guys looking to add anyone else to this class now uh, i know we need we need a uh, kind of a three four and we need a big so uh, I know Coach Mack is – he's talking to a few guys. Uh, I know Harrison Ingram, Jalen Wehrle, um, Elfin Reed, that's a big – and it's two more. But I feel like if we get that next wing and that big, like, that's going to set our class to a different level. Like, we'll have – I think we'll be the number one recruiting class that happens. And right now, 2020 has a couple of the big-time guys as well. Obviously, J.J. Dre. Do you have a bond with any of those guys? Um – Nah, I haven't talked to them, but I follow them on. We follow each other, like, on social media and stuff. Like, uh, I've talked to, like, Carleek and Dave. Okay. Um, who else? Josh and Jay. So, I haven't really talked to DeAndre that, yo. But I've been talking to Bobby and, uh, and Bryce, of course. So, I'm still trying to, like, get a feel for everybody, see how it is. And you talk about Coach Mack. Obviously, the guys earn a lot of respect. He's put together an incredible – almost rebuilt a Louisville in a really quick span since the whole Rick Pitino situation. He has a 24-7 and seven record next year. We'll see what they do this upcoming year. But when you get out there, what's expectations for your first season? Really, I just want to I just want to help us, like, win. Like, that's the main thing. Like, when you win, you get whatever you want. So – and that's what I did here at Tallahassee. So, I just want to go get to Louisville. I just want to try to be a leader and do anything for us to win because that's what he's expecting me to do. That's why he was so high on me because he knew I was older. And to win, to win big, like, you got to have older guys, and that's important. So just getting there, I'm just going to be trying to help the younger guys, help Bobby, because I know he's going to be he's gonna be really good. So I'm going to help him out and just all the younger guys, really, and just try to lead them in the right direction. And there's a situation I think some Louisville fans might be a little hesitant about, and that's obviously they had the number one overall Juco player in the past season with Jay Scrub. We know he's not going pro after he blew up in his sophomore year. For you, you're the number one overall guy once again. And that could possibly be NBA opportunities if things go as well. How are you going to balance that out? See, that's that's going to be that's going to be hard. I mean, like, uh, just knowing I will have that opportunity, like, is going to be different. I mean, I, 
uh, I don't know what to say about that one. Like, I would have to, like, think hard on that one for real because I'll be giving up a lot if I don't, and I'll be giving up a lot if I do. So that would just be something, like, I'll have to think about, like, when the opportunity, like, truly presents itself. Mm -hmm. And for you, though, we know the ultimate goal is the NBA. If it is after this upcoming year, if it is after one or two years at Louisville, for you to get to that next level, what's it going to take? It's just going to take me getting a lot stronger and just continuing to, like, showcase my game at the level that I'm doing. So I just got to continue to get better and just continue to lead the way I'm doing because that's, that's what's going to help me get there. And you got to – to be in a league, like, you got to have that right attitude. Like, they're just not looking at your skill. They're looking at how you do interviews, how you, how you talk to people and stuff like that. So that's going to be big. And when you look at the ACC, we know it's the stat conference, one of the best, not the best conference. Who's the team you're most excited to go up against? Oh, I can't wait to go back home and play Duke and Duke and UNC. Like, those are going to be the two two biggest games of my life right there. I can't wait. And for you to go in the ACC, we know it's going to be a lot of big-time games, but also I'm sure there's some guys that you're close to you're going to go up and play against. Who's someone that you might possibly play against in the ACC or you'd like to possibly play against out of conference as well? So, really, um, I have a friend of mine, Trey Murphy. Uh, he's going to Virginia. He's actually sitting out this year, and he'll be – he's going to be in my class. So, we played – we played with each other um, in high school – not high school, middle school um, with the Dumb Hurricanes. That's where we all started. Um, then I have a few guys at NC State, Nick, Shaq, um, Cam. So, I can't wait to play against just, like, all the guys that I do know. My boy Joey at, uh, at Duke. So, I got a few guys. Like, I forgot, like, Kentucky and uh, Louisville, they, they got a big rivalry. So, that's going to be a big game, too. I can't wait to see what class he has that uh, Coach Cal brings in. And for you now, as I said, the NBA is your ultimate goal. But we talked about before, I mean, there's so many routes now for high school guys coming out of high school. If it is the college route, overseas, G League for right now, could be straight out of pro, JUCO. For guys that go the JUCO route, though, you see, obviously, Jay Scrub. We see as the number one overall player that both guys will have any opportunities, college opportunities at will. You see the guys coming up now behind you, the incoming freshmen. What's your advice to them for who could possibly be the next breakout guy? It's really just going to take, like, extra time in the gym. Like, that's what helped me. Like, it was days, uh, 7 a.m., then I was going back at 9 at night. So, then plus practice and team workouts. So, I was really getting, getting four workouts in a day plus lifting, so around five. So really just going to take a lot of extra work because going to go, like, we're going to have that narrative. Uh, we're not going to be good enough, this like that. So it's really going to take, like, it's going to take to the point where you really just got to sit back and just lock in and just work on your game. That's what really helped me. Like, I blocked out all the outside noise and just worked on my game that entire year. That's what really helped me. So take us through one of your days when you get to JUCO and you're at school. I mean, what's the time from, like, when you wake up at what time to, obviously, at the end of the night? Um, so usually uh, most of my classes are online. So uh, I get up around 12, uh, and go eat, and then around 1, like, we'll have workouts. It usually, usually, it really just depends, like, uh, during the semester. Sometimes we'll have workouts at 11, then we eat right after. Mm -hmm. um, and then usually practice around 2. And then most of us usually stay after and get more shots up. It's just different. It's just different, different days. Like sometimes we lift and shoot and practice and then work out again later and come back and play pickup. So it just really depends. Like I know coming up, like we're having workouts, then uh, we're going to be playing open gym. So it's just going to be, it's going to be a different, different level of ground, really. And you're someone a lot of guys can relate to. I mean, you're obviously not a super tall guy. You're not the most athletic guy I ever to play. I mean, you're a six foot two, six foot three, six four guard, kind of guard, and you're able to do what you're able to do. For guys that have the same kind of height as you, what's what's your advice? How do they be able to become a player like you? Really, like when you're able to shoot the ball at a hot clip, like that really sets everything up. So me being able to shoot the ball I, the way I do, like I'm able to set my defenders up and be able to blow past them. And then if they're a step too late, I can dunk it. If not, then I'll just – I'm crafty around the basket, so I'm able to finish. So, really, if you're able to shoot the ball at a high clip, like, you're going to be really successful playing the game because you've got to be able to shoot. And that's what keeps defenders on their toes because they know they have to – they have to respect the shot. If you can't shoot, then they're just going to play off. But if they – if you can shoot, then they have to respect the shot and a drop. So, they just got to play – they got to play you respectfully. And, and it's hard to do that. 
it's really hard to play guys like that. So just I think being able to shoot the ball really set me to another level. This isn't in a way, obviously, to disrespect any of your teammates and all, but for you, we know the mindset. Obviously, you want to become the best. Your goal is always to bend, go to D1, possibly go to the NBA. And you look at all the other guys in that locker room that have the same kind of goal. How are you able to go work harder than them, or how, how do you kind of outwork them or out, kind of go surpass them to get to the level you were? Uh, really just them talking to me about their past experience. Most of them had came came from D1, so they, they were just telling me, like, you really just got to – work on your game for real because like you could end up back in Juco and that's what happened to them so it really just it really just took me seeing what happened to other players like just showing me like I really just got to work hard on everybody and that's what really set me set me apart from everyone and so you now have another year until you get ready to go to campus what's the stuff you're looking to add your game work on so you're ready to go right away really I'm trying to at least gain like 10 to 15 pounds this year and then just continue to uh, shoot at a higher clip this year. I want to shoot at least 45% from the three, uh, at least 55% from the field. So I'm really just going to try to continue to work on everything. But getting stronger, that's that's going to be the main thing. Like, I'm going to be playing with grown men in the ACC. So you got to be for the league. So I got to be ready for it. 25, 26-year-old men. So I got to just get my body uh, in shape for that. And you're coming off already winning player of the year, freshman of the year. There's not many more awards you can kind of rack in. What is the ultimate goal for you this upcoming year? Really, uh, the national championship. Like, that's that's something that really got taken away from us. Like, we had a chance to do it. So, really, if I can win that this year, like, I think that would be big. Because if I can win it, I don't think nobody has ever won a national championship in JUCO and then go D1 and win one again. So, I want to be one of the few players that ever do that. And in your own locker room, are there any guys you kind of see that you could, that could possibly take the next jump and blow up this next year? Yeah, we do. Like we have, we have a few guys that can really take that next jump. Like, really, I think we might have at least half the team might be high major this year. Really, like we got some really good guys, honestly. So I think we're gonna be really special. Like people thought we were good this year, but this year I think we're gonna be really special. And as we just said, you were able to walk right in as a freshman, do your thing, lead your team to a big time record, and a year from now you're gonna walk right in, presumably probably be the starting point guard for the team in the ACC, how do you kind of plan to take control of the locker room and become the leader of the team right away? So really just coming from having my experience at JUCO is really going to help me because I'll have two years of experience already. So really just coming in, just being vocal and just helping the young guys. And even some of the older guys, sometimes they'll help me. So just being able to be the guy that people can come talk to when things get rough because it's going to be rough days. Like uh, my first eight games at JUCO, like I didn't start like, I had told my coach I wanted to red shirt and everything. Like, I didn't want to be here anymore. But so it's going to be those times that you want to give up. So really just being that voice to guys that can – and, like, they can come talk to me and just – and I can give them advice to help them. It's going to be big. So I think that that's what really going to be able to just help me in the locker room with the guys. And so you said, I mean, you were considering red shirting this past season? Yeah. Like, it got to the – those first eight games were rough. Like, I wasn't playing much. I would turn the ball over. So, I I went, I went in the office. I asked my coach, like, could I rest her? And he was like, no, like, you're going to be good. So, really, it was just uh, them believing in me was really, like, took me took me to the next level because they didn't let me give up. So, when would you say was your breakout moment? So, I would say um, we – we were we played Odessa College. This was my second game star, and uh, we were down a little bit. But I ended up scoring. I had thirty five points uh, that game, and that was that was my breakout game right there. So that from that game on, I just took it to another level. That's when I I really uh, college started to call calling everything like that. So heading into that game that day, did you feel anything different about you inside, or how did you kind of prepare for that game to have that kind of breakout night? So it was really like I just seen like the 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 way the game was going. I just felt like I was gonna have to take over because uh, just of the way they were playing defense. Like it was like a kind of a man type zone defense. So my I couldn't really uh, a lot of my players didn't have a lot of open shots either that they would have. So I just knew like I was gonna have to like just create this game. So I just had to really just create and get my own shot or just try to get them shots. So really it was just that type of game. Like you knew like it was gonna be a good game after you like you hit the first two shots. And you have talked a lot to obviously Coach Mac. When you when you talk to him, what does he see you doing? What does he want from you in your freshman season or technically your junior season then? So really just 
he really wants me to be a leader. Like that's gonna be the main thing because he knows like being in the ACC, like you gotta have you gotta have somebody that can that can help bring your guys together when stuff gets rough. So just being able to be that leader and just to be that guy that can really just take over a game is just really what's gonna be special. And that's what he's gonna need from. And you haven't been able to be coached by him yet, but over the phone and all, a lot of people obviously see Coach Max. See all coaches just as a guy, the coach of the game. What's he like though off the court? Is he funny? I mean, what's his personality type? Yeah, like he's real funny. Like he's real cool and laid back. Like you can really talk to him about anything. Um, and a lot of people don't know that. But once you like really get to talk to him, you see he's like really down to earth. And who on the assistant coach staff would you say you're one of the guys you're kind of close to? I would say, uh, you know, Gallo. He's the one that really started recruiting me. He, when uh, Louisville came to Tallahassee to play Florida State, he came, he came to the practice like right before the game. So he was there to see me. And then from that point on, like, he mentioned me to Mac. And that's when Mac called me about two, two a week later. And we had a really good conversation. That's when they offered me a scholarship. So it was really Coach Gaudio, um to really just take initiative of recruiting me. That's big time, man. And my last yeah. before I let you go is you're obviously going to want to create something special at Louisville or whatever route you end up taking. Whatever that legacy is by the time you walk away from the game and you finish up your pro career, what do you want that to be? Uh, really, I just want to just try to, when I'm done playing, I really just want to try to, I don't know, give back to the youth, uh, let them know, like, you can really do something special when you continue to work and stuff like that. So I just really just want to take whatever I can from the game and give it to everybody else. Um, I just want to, I know I do want to have a really good career when I do play pro. So that's going to be, that's really important to me. So if I have a really good career playing pro and I can really be able to give back and just let the younger guys know coming up, like they can really do what they put their mind to it. I know you're also a believer. I mean, it's kind of taking us through how the relationship is with God and how he's helped you to the point you're at today. So really like just having that relationship with him is really just put me in a situation I, I'm in now. Like without him, like I wouldn't even be living right now. I wouldn't even have the things that I have. So I just try to always use my platform to give back and to let people know like God is really important in what you're doing in your life. Amen, man. Couldn't agree, man. More, man. Congratulations once again. I appreciate you taking time to come on, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. Appreciate you having me, bro. Of course, man. You know you're always welcome on, man. God bless.